my computer now and um, let's see I'm gonna start out with uh, this file this file uh, this is part of uh, a CD of uh, drawings that I bought from uh, Daniel Camp and uh, it outlines uh, you know the design of uh, his conversion I'm pretty much doing the, the things that he has done uh, although there are a few things that uh, I might need to change due to, uh, you know, my, my the, the nature of my mail. But uh, for the most part, I'm just uh, doing what he outlined here. And you can see this uh, is uh, uh, the right support for the uh, the mounting brackets uh, for for the for the z-axis. And um, basically, this is what I had to go uh, on. There's a bunch more drawings, of course, uh, but we'll, today we'll just focus on the, on this particular one for our example. So what I did, I uh, put that, redrew that with uh, with uh, a cam, uh, sorry, computer aided design uh, software. You can see the part here. Let me show you that it's not too dark. Try to refocus it. Um, and maybe take it out of uh, that mode. There you go. That's probably better. And uh, so this is a part that uh, that I worked on so far. Flatten it. Um, I drilled the holes, and I machined this little this little I want to say depression here that helps another plate sit on top of it. And we'll see how this fits here in just a second. Um, and again, what we're trying to do today is just to do this cut right along this edge. So just to give you a better idea where this fits in the big scheme of things, um, I have uh, all the uh, all the rest of the plates and stuff uh, drawn up and put together into another drawing that we can take a look at. So let's see if I can zoom in. Okay, so this is the plate that we're going to be working on, and it's part of this assembly. Let me see if I look at it from above. Um, this part right here, it might look familiar. It's a, a stepper motor mounting bracket. The motor is going to be um, oops, the motor is going to be sitting on top of this vertically, sitting right up here, and the motor itself is going to have a little pulley and there's going to be a belt and there's going to be another bigger pulley attached to here. Obviously the motor needs to be able to slide in and out so this whole plate as you can see can slide in and out and there's not supposed to slide off of it but uh, those are bolts that are going to capture this and go right through there so it has a little limited adjustability. Uh, this part right here turns and this is the um, bolt screw. It's going to be a nut um, a bolt nut attached to it, of course, which is attached to the pulley, which is attached to this. And as uh, this turn, as this assembly turns, the bolt screw is going to go up and down. And you might be able to, let me see if we can get it better. There you go. As this turns, the, the lead screw, um, sorry, the bolt screw is going to go up and down as the motor turns and this part here is going to attach to the head of uh, of the mill so the head of the mill with a cutting instrument implement is going to be sitting down here and uh, as the G code commands the Z axis to go down zzz, oops. <laughs> sorry for the sound effect but uh, as it commands it to go down oops, I'm grabbing the wrong thing now here it goes this is going to make the head go down, do the cut, as it command, is commanded to retract this thing is gonna go up and yeah, let's take a look from below it's gonna retract, yeah, so it's gonna move like this uh, so on the opposite end the bracket looks a little different because my mill column has uh, 
a flange on this side uh, so you can have, you can have this uh, this part right here uh, so I'm gonna have to make sure that the clearances are, are all right and one problem that I have with all this design I haven't quite figured out exactly why is uh, with the, these holes here that somehow you can see they don't match up everything else matches up but these holes uh, that attach to this block that is actually inside the, the column of the mill for some reason do not line up and they should because all these there's some bolts that go right through all of them right here let's see maybe if I turn it upside down yeah see these bolts right here they go right through here line all these parts and so they should fit but uh, I'll figure it out so far uh, I have a little misalignment there I haven't quite figured that out but anyways uh, this is uh, not this one but uh, this one's the part that I drew and uh, I transferred, imported this into uh, my uh, CAM program. Let's take a look at that. Let's see. All right. And so you can see, you can see in this, uh, in this, in this program, you can see the part and you can see a block of uh, aluminum. This is the zero coordinates, X, Y, Z, just like it's set up in the mill. And I should probably better this way. See, take these things off for now. So that's the part as I imported it, and then I added obviously the uh, the material, the material, uh, so that the mill knows what, where it needs to be uh, material needs to be removed. And uh, I uh, I told basically I told the uh, the computer that I wanted this part cut off. Uh, it wasn't quite as easy as that, but uh, you know, I'm still learning, so it's things are a lot more difficult for me right now. But um, let's see. And this is what it came up with. Which what you see right now uh, are the um, the green ones. Let's see if I can zoom in. Uh, let me zoom in on this thing. Yeah, there you go. You might be able to see the green ones. The green ones are the uh, roughing cuts. You see the green color roughing waterline, green in green. So these are all the roughing cuts, and it does it on eight different Z levels, eight different height. And then at the end, it does a finishing uh, finishing cut. You can see the blue lines, and the blue lines go only around the periphery of this line. Uh, here it's. Uh, let's see, I keep forgetting how this works. Oh yeah, here is a, a theoretical end mill that would plunge down and do all the cutting. So I'm just going to run a quick simulation so you see, I'm going to make it go fast and you'll see what the big idea is with the, with the milling that is to take place. So we're going to tell him to pretend that this is a real mill. You know, turn on, see, turn on the tool pass and turn on to visibility. All right, and zoom in a little bit so you can see it up close. See if we can move it. No, that's not what I'm trying to do. There you go. And we're gonna run it and show you what this is supposed to be doing. So first, this is the roughing cut. Takes out all that material. Obviously, this could have been just cut out, but uh, it's small enough that it doesn't really matter. So, and it's good practice. We'll see how that works out. And after that. You're gonna use the same mill, and as you can see, it's gonna do a very close shave and finishing of the cut, and that's the end of it. That's the big idea. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it works out that way, and we're not quite sure at this point. So, anyways, what this uh, what this program does, um, it uh, figures out the G code, which is the uh, machine language commands, if you wish, that the uh, mill controller uses to actually move the, the milling head, uh, the cutting instrument. So this generates a G code. I'm not sure exactly what a G code looks like. Uh, all right, this is the exact G code I'm using for this uh, for.
for this car after all the modifications that I made and uh, I hope it comes in clear enough I cannot make it any bigger but uh, it's basically nine pages of coordinates and commands and gibberish and you know it's not really difficult stuff but it's just a lot of lines of code I think it's like uh, nearly 600 lines of code and you make a mistake here you could just just trash your part so uh, it's, it's kind of important anyway this gets imported into the controller as a controller's Mach 3 now you can see the edge here that is gonna get cut and uh, what you're looking at here we're looking at straight down all the different lines of cutting that we've seen before you can see from the side so if I can turn it better this is from the side you can see the eight different levels of cut that it's going to do these red lines are when the tool retracts because the code still has the tool retracting I'm still doing it by hand but uh, it still shows there session or something um, anyways uh, back to this, um, really not, not much else to say except just gonna start it and you can see these are the, uh, let's see if I can see, yeah, this vertical line here, I don't know if you can see, let me zoom in maybe, kind of hard to see with all this color line, but this line is where the tool is uh, at the per particular moment and as it goes around you might see that the lines is cutting is turning white, but I'm just gonna run uh, just one set um, and see uh, you, you will be able to see the CNC controller software running the tool theoretically because it's not connected right now uh, to do this cut so we're gonna hit cycle start it's gonna stop a few times well it's gonna stop at the beginning when we need to uh, lower the tool but I'll do that but hold on a second something's not right here stop Let's go back up there. Oh yeah, get back here at the beginning. Uh, right, maybe rewind. There we go. I'm still learning this thing. Uh, all right, here we go. Start. All right, so the, it stops right away because it's got to do this vertical plunge. Uh, that's the M. You know, I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys are not seeing the old picture. you can see it a little better. Anyway, there's an M0 code here and I, I wrote down Z down to minus 0, 047 inches. So this is the, uh, this is the plunge that it does uh, outside of the part first uh, and uh, I'll do that by hand at this point and then cycle start again. And now you can see that the tool is moving, is moving around and it is doing its uh, cutting. Well, I'm a little lost here. Oh, there you go. So it's doing his uh, initial machining right there. Sometimes it beeps, I don't know why. And there you go. And once it gets to the end of the last cut, it's gonna stop and ask, you know, because I told him to stop, and then it's gonna want his tool reposition to the beginning. So there you go. The, let's see if we can get back there. The tool is stopped right there, I got another M0 there. I put down, move the Z axis above the part. So I would be repositioning by hand, I'm gonna cycle start again, it's gonna basically move back to the beginning and then stop again. Okay. Now I would plunge the tool back in and cycle start one more time and uh, the cycle repeats until the part is uh, cut and gets to the next time that the uh, z-axis needs to be moved. Obviously once the mill is all finished and uh, if I were to do another cut like this, I would just run the program and the z-axis would work automatically and I would never have to theoretically would never have to do a thing to it but right now the z-axis is not up yet so I'm gonna have to work with what we have for now alright so we're gonna stop this simulation and I think that's pretty much all I wanted to show you uh, we're just gonna have to uh, connect things up and uh, zero out the uh, the axis on the part and on the computer and run it and hopefully things don't blow up on us. Hang in there.